Hello. So if you can hear me, Andy, whether you've got a uh, mute on or Hello. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Not bad. Is that Andy or Patrick? Uh, this is Patrick. Oh, hi, Patrick. Put my, my oh, there you go. I'm a real Quite person, now. I promise. <laughs> cool. We're just going to give it a few minutes and then we'll get going. Um, so nice. Hit seven. So, oh. Um, so yeah, so can you see my screen all right? Can do, yeah. Good old commute, saving the day. Uh, get rid of that. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, so yeah, so we'll get started in a sec. I'll just go through, essentially, my how I plot routes is all I'm going to really talk about. How I plot routes and then how I steal how I steal them from other people and edit them to uh, to to fit what I need them to be. So whether I want them to start somewhere different, whether I want them to end up somewhere or go via a specific hill or or something similar like that. Um, so hopefully there's a learn a, a, a bits and pieces from from this. Um, whether you're an experienced um, route planner or somebody who's never done it before at all, so it should be hopefully learn something. Hi, Paul. You're on mute, I think, Paul. Oh, sure. Um, how many have we got now? So there's plenty of people think have on mute. That's fine. Okay, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Um well, we've got eight people, that's cool. There'll be probably be people joining as we go. Um and we can just, they can just glean the bits they can glean. Um, is there a way to, okay, yeah, so my meeting is recording. So this will all be posted in the members app afterwards. Um, if you've got questions um, and you don't want to speak up, feel free to just type a question into the, into the, um, the chat function. Um, if I don't get to it, during the chat, I'll come to them at the end, and then we can have a we can have a bit of a Q and A at the end, um, and I'll read out some of the questions that have been asked. Um, I might cover it during the process of the talk, in which case, you know, we won't cover it again. But yeah, ask any questions you've got, either either speak up during during the talk or just post a comment, and and we can get to it at the end. 
Um, okay, so first things first, um, plotting, we're going to start with plotting routes. So we're going to go through how basically I would go about plotting a route if I were wanting to go out for a ride on any given day. Um, so we'll come to finding other people's routes and editing them afterwards. Um, this is going to, we'll start very basic and we'll write at the beginning for anyone who doesn't know how to plot a route um, or has never um, had any, any sort of work, any time working with Strava or Commute. Um, I'll start with Strava and then we'll go on to Commute and do a, we'll probably do more in Commute because there's, there are more functions in Commute. It's a better system and setup for plotting routes. Um, so if you've not used Commute, it's a good thing to, to get practicing with it because it will give you um, more, there's just loads more features that you can, you can play with, um, which is good. But okay, we'll start with Strava. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. If you can't, just shout, but I think I've figured out now how to share it properly. Um, and the way to create a route is you go to your routes with your, you know, you don't need a, um, anything more than that. And then, yeah, so as you see here, I've got a few routes already that are just various routes that I've created in the past. But today we're going to just create a new route. Um, it will take you to your location or your uh, hover over where you are. Um, and so we're going to start a route. We're going to start in Regents Park because it's quite a popular location for many of, of you uh, members, especially the London cyclists. Um, obviously, it doesn't matter which map you, where you where you are starting you just you've got this cross here click to start the route that is basically all you need to do to get started so once you've clicked the route you get your green dot that's your start point um it's not a, yeah you can move it around if you want start it from a different point start it on the corner like a lot of our rides do um and that's your start point so then essentially that's all you need to get going. The next point is then clicking the next section where you want to go to. And that can be like this, one kilometer away, or it could be 50 kilometers away. That would give you your next point and Strava will find a route through there to get to that next point. Um, if you know the roads really well, like this route, for instance, if I was going to create it, I might decide we were going to go up to, um, Say Swain's Lane, for instance, from from here, which is quite a nice, quite a nice route. I know that this way out of the park is quite good, so I'd pop out like that, and I'd work my way up north. Um, you just can click along the map as you go. As you can see, like it's not that doesn't necessarily make for a pretty route, and it wouldn't give you a really good um, ride experience. But as you click on the map, it finds where you're going. So it's quite a good um you know it's quite a good system for just having a play around and um and finding out where different roads go um before we go any further with plotting this actual route i'm going to tell you a bit about these bits on the side here because they're quite important so as you can see there's a lot of blue lines here um at the moment that is the the global heat you can see here on the left i've got it ticked so that shows you the really popular routes as you can see, the outer circle of Regent's Park is thick blue. Um, yeah, up north from uh, coming out of London, also thick blue. It just shows where like most cyclists have been going. So if you don't know anything else about where you're going, you can put that global heat map on and it will tell you where the popular routes are. Like in a city like this, obviously it's quite a lot of the commuting routes, so they're not necessarily the nicest roads, um, but at least you know that a lot of cyclists will use these roads. Um, so there's going to be strength in numbers and then probably be some sort of infrastructure. When you get out into the countryside, obviously it becomes a bit more tricky because there's going to be less riders, fewer riders, and they the, the blue lines might be more difficult to follow. Um, at that point as well, you're probably looking for type of road rather than how many cyclists have been on it, you know, whether it's a country lane or a, a motorway, but we'll come to that in a sec. Um, so you can have that off if you like, and it makes it a bit clearer to see what what roads you're on and then if you want to put it back on to check that you know check where the cyclists are going you just do that um, another good option which i use quite regularly is the segments here this is quite this is a new feature i think it's quite cool um, you can put on the segments in that particular area and it will show you 
other it will show you hills it will show you sort of bits that have been earmarked by other cyclists um you know the outer circle of regent's park for instance or um if we go up north there'll be some around hampstead heath um and swain's lane obviously that's swain's lane there so we're headed um and it will it just gives you something to aim for and you can click on said segment and it brings it up on the side here and then you click on the details and it opens up a new can't get rid of that green line don't know what it is um and then it opens that's, up um, a draw um, sorry that, yeah that green line is like an annotations thing uh from your menu bar no, and do um, it yeah i think there's a like clear like if you go to view options there's an annotate button yeah yeah i got it thanks paul that's nice that's really annoying me um okay yeah so swain's lane is this is the segment for swain's lane you can tell you it's a tough hill as most of us already know but you can see just following the blue dot you can see where the segment goes and you can see how much elevation is gained in the ride um so you can use that to to route that in if you want to take on a, a nice tough climb in the route or you can use it to really avoid it um, and stay away from that particular section as fair warning if there's a climb here like this um you can bet your bottom dollar this is also a climb and this is also a climb and probably some of these are also climbs and this is also a climb because a ridge like this is not going to just be the one it's not just going to be one hill that's standing on its own there's going to be others around it so likelihood is most of these roads are going to be climbs and um, when we come to them i'll show you how to check that as well without using the segments necessarily because they won't always be segments um, so we'll keep the segments on because they're quite handy um, and we'll go back to the route we were doing. So what I can do if I want to is so I would say I want to go up Swain's Lane. I've started here and I've got my first bit, but I don't know these roads in the middle, but I think I want to get up to here. And this also works if you want to go right out of town, you wanted to go up to North London, you know, say 50 kilometers away, you can go that far up the map and click on a point and Strava will make you a route between them. Um, and then again, it comes back to this left-hand mode here. So if you look at your options on the right, you've got follow most popular or follow most direct. That is quite good if you're looking for the routes everybody else is doing, which generally are gonna be more popular, quieter, um, nicer roads for cyclists. If, you know, if you're honest, it's what you're looking for really. Um, however, if you're just trying to get somewhere, then obviously you would follow most direct. It won't put you on motorways because you're not allowed to ride on motorways, but it would put you might put you on A roads, B roads, that kind of thing. So generally, you want to keep it on follow most popular because that's the um, the nicest roads when you're when you're riding. Then also new features, you've got elevation. You can try and minimize elevation or maximize elevation depending on what you want to do again if you're trying to get to a point and you don't know the roads in between but you don't like hills you can click minimize elevation and it will just try and route you around any hills if you really like hills you click maximize elevation and it will take you the hilliest way possible same for surface types if you want dirt and off-road it will try and take you down every track and trail there is and if you want paved roads all tarmac it will take you on those uh, tarmac sections so back to our route like i said we want to go swain's lane but i don't know these roads in between here so what i'm going to do so i'm just going to click on the top of swain's lane i've got that slightly wrong i'm going to click at the top of swain's lane which is there and it's built me a route already to take me there so it's pretty much a direct way out of the park up past kentish town and up to the top of Swains. That's how I would go if I were going there myself. Um, so that's put that in. It's built in Swains Lane, a few other segments along the way, but that's what I'm aiming for. Let me just get rid of this. So now, what I was saying about checking that this is elevation or not elevation, what you can do now is you've got your end bit here. You've got your, that's your finish point at the moment. If you save the route, that's where it would finish. And that would be your route. It'd be 5.6K long. You'd gain 107 meters. But if you're not sure, there's no segment, say, for this road, say Swain's Lane, you can drag your finish point 
down, let's say at the moment we're finishing here, you've got two options. You can go up, you can go this way or this way, and you want to know which one's the hilliest. What you can do is without having any segments on, let's take segments off, you've just got two roads and you're not sure which one's going to be. They both look paved, nice white line. That's obviously is another way of looking at it that we'll come to in a minute. The bigger the road, the wider it is on the map. So as you can see, these little roads look very much like smaller roads in comparison to West Highgate Hill. It's true, they are, like they, it is what it looks like. The road width on the map is an indication of how busy or big the road is. And you can assume that the, the fatter roads are busier and that's generally the case. Sometimes it's not always the case, but more often than not, that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna check out the elevation. So you've got Swain's Lane, I wanna, I'm gonna just click at the top of Swain's and it's taking me up Swain's. To do that again, if you wanna check elevation, move yourself to the start of the road and you look at what you're on at the moment. So down here is your stats for the route currently. Elevation gain is 37 meters. If I click my route to the top of Swain's, then it takes me up to 109 meters. So that's 60 meter gain. And that's not bad for one, for about you know 600 meters, 800 meters of road. Um, but I also want to check the other side. So I go back, press back on the top right there and it takes me back down to where I was. And then I put it in from say going up West Highgate Hill and it's the same. So I know that these two roads are basically the same. That means I'm pretty certain this is an entire ridge um, and you can, also double check, no, you can't do that anymore. You used to be able to add in, um, you used to, be able to add in a profile thing here, but you can't anymore, I don't think. So yeah, basically that's- yeah, I think the, sorry, David, I think the profile thing's like on the bottom right now. Your face is in the way. <laughs> I don't know uh, if that's yeah, where you're looking. Profile, no, I was talking about the, um, you could add it on, you could overlay it on the map, but- uh, yeah. All right, sorry. If you want to, if you want to um, check how much of a ramp you're about to get, it's difficult to see sometimes because looking at this, you're already going uphill. To this point, you're uphill, so you're. But that's at 57 meters. It still looks like that's a climb. Whereas once you go and click on the top of the hill, then it's still going up. But if you look at the numbers, obviously now it's 128 meters. You've gained 108. So looking at this number here will often give you a better indication than if you use the elevation profile because sometimes it looks like a massive hill when it's not and sometimes it does it looks totally flat and turns out to be a hill so you have to sort of worry about that sometimes um okay but either way we've got our we've got our route here and we want to bring it back to um we want to bring it back to regent's park um, as you can see, there are a load of tracks here through Hampstead Heath. Um, some of them look like they might be roads, like this, for instance. It's got two, it's a white, it's got two gray lines and a white middle. That means that it's a road, or at least it can be cycled on, but you can't necessarily get to that without going on one of these dotted lines, which is essentially a footpath. And you're not 100% allowed to cycle on those, or at least if you did, it would be pretty slow because there'd be a lot of people walking, etc. So that's a way to, to see the difference between the roads. You've got Hampstead Lane here, which is a kind of busier, bigger town road. And you've got like Fitzroy Park here, which is a very small road. You can tell that's a residential street. And then you've got these dotted lines through the middle of Hampstead Heath that are footpaths. Um, you would obviously be, probably get away with cycling through them, but it would be slow going. You may have to get off and walk, etc. So because these aren't, giant motorways let's see if we can find a giant motorway so it looks like there we go the north circular classic that's a big busy road you don't want to go on it's very wide compared to say golders green road um it would let you go on it like we could ride we could ride on we could ride across the north circular if we wanted i've done it a few times it's not very nice i will say that and i would recommend not doing it at any point um, so that's the width of the road on the map gives you a good indication of how busy the road is um, and how you want to stay away from it. The smaller the road, the better. Generally, um, if you're out for a nice 
scenic ride. If you've got to get somewhere quickly, then you're looking at these Hampstead Lane sized roads. So you then can start routing yourself around Hampstead Heath because we're going to come around the Heath. I'm going to come down to Hampstead Village. Um, again, I know where I want to go, so I'm now just clicking on the roads that I'm uh, interested in. Um, but I want to go back quickly because I can see that I've made a mistake here. This bit, I don't want to go on that bit. It's not going to cause you any major issues. But all you have to do to correct these little mistakes is get your finger cursor over there, click on it with your mouse, and just drag it back to the main line, and it takes that out completely. Um, again, that little one there, if you saved it like that, it wouldn't make a difference because you're not going to follow that on the route when you go, but it just makes it a lot neater. Likewise, if I then decide, actually, I did want to put in Swain's Lane, and I, if this route were a lot longer and I'd made you know 60Ks worth of route, and then I decided I wanted to put in Swain's Lane, it'd be a real pain to undo all of the work I've done to come back in and just click to, to put Swain's Lane in. So what you can do is either you can save the route and you can um, create it, uh, sorry, and then go back in and edit it and do this, or you can just whilst, before you finish the route, as long as you've got a white dot there on your, um, on your finger cursor, you can click on the, on the red line that you have and you can drag it over and drop it on a nearby road. You can't really do it if the road you're trying to drop the line on is really far away or you've got lots of roads to go over. So you want to be careful with that. But if you just want to move from one road to the next parallel road, you can click on the, either the red line or the white dots are quite easy. They're sort of way markers and you can drag them. I don't see that one didn't move very well. So that's still saying that it wants me to go this way. So I don't want to go that way. So I'm going to pull. I'm going to click on it enough times that it goes the way I want it to go, um, and then that way I've got Swain's Lane in, and it's, uh, it's more the route I wanted to do. So now again, I'm coming back through North London, some busy roads, and it's difficult to find out exactly where I want to go. If I just want to get back to where I started, you know, you can you see bring the your cursor down to the end of the route where you started, and you just click the button, and there you go. It's routed it for me, and that's the most direct way coming through Swiss Cottage back into the park and around the way I came. Um, and that would be just fine. Maybe though, I don't want to go via Swiss Cottage because it's a bit busy and I want to go a different way. So I can undo that and I can come through Hampstead into Bell's Eyes Park and I can sort of route my way down like this in through Primrose Hill bit nicer and I can go back that way. Oh, so I made a mistake again. Move that in there and then come back like that. So there, I can now, I've got my complete circular route. It's just under 15 kilometers long. It's got 150 meters of climbing. So it's gonna take me half an hour. Um, if I'm unsure and I wanna check any of the elevation profile here, I can see that the big climb in there is Swain's Lane, and then there's a little bit more climbing at the top round Highgate, and then it drops back down to thingy. If I'm happy with that, then I can save the route, and it will go into my route to be used whenever I'm ready. If I decided I wanted to make it a bit longer from this point, again, I can just, I can drag the route like this, and I can pull the bits out to where I want it to go, and I can do this, and then I can do this. And it gives me a bit more, a bit more distance and a bit more, um, a bit more elevation. Um, what's quite nice here is this little section here, because this gives you a good indication of the way types, the surfaces you're using. So as you can see, the surface type section down here it tells you that it's 99% paved and 1% not specified. This section here is unspecified tarmac travel uh, terrain. Not sure what it is. Um, it's probably a little path or something. Um, probably totally fine cyclone, but when you're making your route, you can check that to see what is, um, you know, what is definitely thick red line is definitely um, available to cyclone. It's a road, unspecified, could well be a road. It could be dirt track, could be something else entirely. 
So you want to look out for those when you're when you're building your routes and checking on on what you what you've got. So that is essentially your basic how to make a route in Strava. There's quite a lot of tools on the left here that are quite easy to use. Um, they will give you a lot of um, they'll give you a lot of uh, help with um, what you what you're when you're kind of adding in the roads, checking roads that you want to do then shows you the route in Strava and you can again you can see the profile you can check the bits where you're going uphill you can check the bits where you're going downhill and you can you can have a look at all the different things that's coming in so we will go we'll come back to that in a sec if anyone's got any questions they can um, we can ask them at the end about the Strava routes but that's as, as, as good as it gets one thing I would recommend is that you just play around with it it's um it's good fun to sort of muck about with with routes like that and, and try and 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 build things as you go, depending on where you live. Um, if you come out further, obviously you can see, say let's go towards Bishop Stortford. Uh, it's a good route out from London. But if you live in Bishop Stortford or you live near Bishop Stortford, you've got these roads again. You've got some big roads. The width again shows you how big the road, how busy the road is. And the amount of other roads that kind of ensnare it will give you an idea as well. What you're looking for is these nice smaller roads that you that, that you can kind of guarantee are going to be country lanes. Um, often the name will give you a good indication as well as to what the road is like. So if it's called if it's something lane, there we go, Parsonage Lane, great example. Parsonage Lane looks like a lovely, lovely road to ride on. Um, that's the sort of thing you want to be really trying to get into your route. Um, and whilst you're making it, there might be a segment through Parsonage Road, Parsonage Lane. Probably not because it's quite a small road, but that's the sort of thing you really want to be trying to get in um, in order to, to have the most scenic route possible. If you've got like Harlow Road, Cambridge Road, the bigger name Stortford Road, those are generally the busier roads because they are the ones that are leading into the towns. So they'll be more used by cars and, and less used by bikes. So that's what you're looking out for when you're building routes on Strava, I would say. Um, okay, now we're gonna quickly go on to commute and do the same thing, just so that I can show you a good feature from commute, um, which I use all the time, because it's a really, really um, interesting feature. So the segments in Strava have been built by users. Um, oftentimes they are somebody's driveway or like the street they live on where they want to get the king of the mountain for that particular street, that particular segment. Um, it's not necessarily a come and ride this section because it's really great. That's what Kamut does really nicely. Um, it, has, it has some really nice um, user generated content. So it tells you, you know, there's lots of lovely um, sections that other cyclists have ridden and and you should ride too. So let's take Cambridge as a start point. So again, it's the same same process as as, um, as Strava, but you can you can put your starting point in here on the left and you can use these sections here, which will tell you points of interest, food and drink, pubs, for instance, accommodation, train stations, all useful things. If you click them, they'll pop up. So train stations, pubs, that's a pretty good starting point. Um, so then if you, don't, if you don't have a particular point at which you want to start, it might be, you know, you're probably going to start at your house or the local cafe. But let's say we're going to start at Sheep's Green. You can either make that your destination or you can start there. There we go. So we're starting at Sheep's Green. Again, enter destination. You can you can literally type in your destination and it will take you there. Or what I like to do is you can find another point on the map, like for instance, Newmarket Racecourse. And you click on that and you can set it as your destination. And then that's given you a route 23 kilometers long that will take you to Newmarket Racecourse. It's going to take you on the most, um, it's going to take you on the most user-friendly route, route there is um, to ensure that you get the nicest ride because it uses the other, it uses cyclist data to find the best routes. Um, if you want to make it a round trip, 
it will take you back to Cambridge like that. So that's an out and back route, just just like that. Right off the block, you've got Cambridge, Newmarket, Racecourse, and back, um, without too much of a uh, too much hard work. Um, however, if you don't want to come the way you came, you want to see some views over the River Cam, which Helen McPherson has said you need to drop on the pavement on the way up to the bridge if you want to stop and look at the river. Particularly helpful, but if you you can then click include on route. And it will add it onto the route. So what it's done there is it's put it on this way. So on the way out, it will take you up to Newmarket and then back via this um, thing. That, as you can see, is because there aren't a huge number of roads in between Newmarket and here, view over the River Cam. But if I say I want to go to Swaffham Prior as well which looks like a very lovely village. There you go. So now it's given me a different route back via Swaffham Prior, drops back to where I where I was coming out, and then it goes to view over the River Cam, and then back to Cambridge. But if I decide I want to go to the Carlton Arms on the way back for a drink, I can also include that on my route. And there you go, it, again, it will give you a different uh, way back into Cambridge via the Carlton Arms in order to get a drink. You might not want to stop at the Carlton Arms. It might just you might just want to come a different way back than the way you came out, which is often how I'll do things. And that way, it takes you via the Carlton Arms. If it looks like a nice route, then it's a nice way to get from one place to another. Um, again, like with Strava, if you want to drag the route around, you can click on it. And drag it up. Yes, it works as well. Oh. Hang on. So you can click on the route and it will take it up. There you go. So it takes it up like that. You're not going to swap from prior anymore, but now you've got a nice big circular loop around that will bring you back to Cambridge. So that's the best way on commute to make routes because you've got all this information that other cyclists have put in, um, cyclists and walkers, sorry, and they give you like loads of good information there. So it's a nice way. You can make a commute route exactly the same way as you make a Strava one. You start with point A and you just click around until you get back to where you were. But these bits have been put in by other cyclists. That's so quite a nice way to, to find other good local routes, especially if you're in an area you don't know. One of the reasons I use commute so much is because in an area you're not so sure about, it's great to use other people's um, information and people that have gone before you. Okay, so that's doing it. commute again. You save the tour, and it goes into your goes into your collection. There you go. It's already given me a name. Sheep's farm. Sheep's greens. Carton arms, and there it is. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick look at editing routes. Um, we don't have a huge amount of time left. Um, so I'll take a route I've already got, and as you can see, I've got this in Strava and in Komoot. It's not so easy to edit routes in Strava um, because it's just not so set up for it, whereas Komoot is really good for it. And it's great if you've got a collection like, say, for instance, the Dirty Weekend collections that are already set to go, but they don't necessarily start where you live. Um, you want to do the route, but it's it, you know, you're not sure how to get to the beginning. That's often the case. Um, and editing the start point is a really good way to, um, to to get around that problem. So you come to the route that you can see here. So you might have found this in the Dirty Weekend collection, or you might have just be scouring um, Commute's Discover section. And you, you want to ride the route. You can see all the highlights that everybody else has put in, but then the actual route is here. So you don't necessarily live in East London where this starts. You might live in central London or Camden, say, or North London, but you don't know how to get there to the beginning. So the easiest way to edit any route is to go replan this tour and then select starting point. It will then give you this page and ask you to search for a new starting point. So you can put your house, you can put your postcode in and it will start it from your house. And that gives you, it will give you a full route from your house. 
Um, or you can put in, say, you want to start it in Regent's Park, which is easy, and it will give you the start from Regent's Park. So as you can see there, it's just added on that section to get you to and from the start um, without doing very much at all. You can go down and have a look at how much has been added. So 40 minutes of time, 16 kilometers to get to and from the start from Regent's Park. Um, you can you can click in to have a look at that um, just to check the roads that you are going to be riding on to make sure they're not too busy. As it's commute, you know it's probably taking you quite a nice way because it tends to avoid the busier roads and take the less um, the less known, more sort of scenic back roads. Um, so yeah, so it's taking you out and back on a to the route to where to essentially where the route started before. Um, and then adding it on. So that looks pretty good in terms of getting to, to it from where you want to start from. So all you have to do then is save the tour and it asks you to save it. Again, you can call it. So it's, it's taken the original name um, and you can just add in from Regents and then you've got yourself a new route that starts anywhere you want it to. Um, and that way, your, all, all the routes that we have on our database, all the routes that exist on Commute, you can basically edit to, to, to suit your needs. Um, if you've decided then that that's taking, that's a bit too far and you don't want to necessarily go quite that far, you can go to edit tour because it's added 16 kilometers on and you think, mm, I'm not sure about that. What you can then do, to shorten it slightly, see this extra bit on the edge here? 0.87, to 8. If you decide I want to make this a bit shorter, those points can all be taken out. You just click on them and then remove. If I can, hang on. Sorry, the, my screen's slowing down a bit. Yeah, so I can take out 0.8. If I don't want that in there anymore, it will then find me another way that's quicker, more direct way to the previous point. And then I can remove point seven. The other way to do this, if you wanted to use the left hand button here, is you can take out the port waypoints from here. So six, five, four, there we go. So three, that's now basically taken off about 10K, I think. And I can even do more than that if I wanted to. There we go. So that's dropped it down to now 87 kilometers, which from Regent's Park makes it a lot more doable for me. And I'm much happier with that. So I can, I can even, you know, you can take out, if I wanted to, didn't want 0.6 to be in there. And once you start playing around in the area you live in a bit more, you'll know which bits are which bits are which, which bits are good. So that bit, for instance, it goes off the main road slightly, take it out, and it just brings it onto the main road. And then if I decide, oh no, I want to put that back in, click on it, include in route, adds it back in again. So there's loads of easy functions you can do to 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 edit and customize routes as much as you like. Um, you just then have to save it. And there you go, it's back in your collection, back in your tours and planned in your uh, in your thingy. So yeah, so that's, that's how to do those two things in Commute. That's kind of all you need really to start playing around with routes. The main things I would suggest, um, I'm hurrying a little bit because we're running out of time. I've waffled on a bit too much. Um, but yeah, play around. If you don't, if you if you think you want to try Camus out, I would definitely give it a go. There's a lot more functions than there are in um, in uh, Strava because it's what it's for. It's a root routing database. Strava is much more for um, tracking your your data. Um, Camus does a lot more. But play around in Strava too and see which works for you. Um, Start local, so try and start roads nearby to you. So ones that you know is often helpful because it's just a bit more familiar and a bit more accessible. Um, start small, plot a small route, can be 20K, 
15k and just plot it from your house out to a point of interest and back figure out how to do that route that ride it come back edit it tweak it play around with it and then you can um you can get a bit more adventurous as you go from there um and also you know use things like finding where the train stations are make sure you even if it takes you out of your way a little bit routes you via a train station that's easy to get back from just in case so that you don't have to worry too much about you know whether the route is completely completable um, you have a bailout point you will absolutely get to the point where you are on a road you don't want to be on um, whether it's a main road or a dirt track or something like that you'll come across private land you'll you'll come into all of these things it's just part of the course you have to then go home once you've you'll figure a way around it quite easily and then once you get home you can take that bit out and route it a different way and and see where you go from there so as i said it's all about experimenting and just playing around um i think we are about to run out of time i'm afraid so i think we're gonna have to leave it there sorry for the lack of q a at the end there um if anybody does have any routing questions this is going to be recorded so i'll make sure it gets to everybody so you can watch it again and just check on some bits if you have questions um like drop me drop us a line drop us an email or a message so that we can um i can answer them directly i'll just answer you via email um question to question and then you can um hopefully helps with your routing um and you know i would say definitely go for it explore with some of the different routes um edit some of our routes um as well play around with that make them start at your house or a local cafe ride the route take out hills put in hills try and uh, and, and customize them as much as possible the more you play with it the the better you'll get at noticing what's good and, and what which way you should be going and before long it will be 